So far, everything that we've talked about in this class was directed towards situations that I described in the, the first line here. Supply by firms and demand by households. So the supply, every supply curve that I've drawn has been a supply curve that represents firm behavior. Every demand curve that I've drawn is a demand curve that represents consumer behavior. We call that type of market, so that's the third column on the first row, a final goods market or a market for consumption goods. Now, it turns out that that's not the only kind of market there is in economics, in the economy. The second line shows supply by firms and demand by firms. Supply by firms, we understand. Demand by firms exists for things, you, you see in the third column, intermediate goods. Anything that one firm sells to another firm. And many of these things would be th things that consumers would never buy, like sh sheets of refined copper or crude oil, or other kinds of um, producer goods, they're, they're sometimes called. But, but intermediate goods is a better term for it because it's both the supply and demand is, is done by firms. The third line are commodities which are supplied by households and demanded by firms. And we think of all inputs, or so-called primary goods, as being examples of that. Uh, labor. Uh, so not, not all inputs. Some inputs are intermediate goods. Um, but uh, primary goods, or the ultimate factors of production, like labor, are examples of um, supply by households and demand by firms. You might think of land as being an example of that, where the households own the lands and they they rent them, let's say, to firms, even though in some cases the household and the firm might be the same people, like if you have a family farm. And finally, we've got the fourth line, supply by households and demand by households. You can think of barter as being that kind of situation, a situation where there's no production, or at least no production by firms. And we'll study when we study that, we'll call that pure exchange. Now, you might wonder, this course has already lasted a long time, and if we've only done one quarter of all the possibilities, how long could it last? But the analysis of these other types has been made much easier by what we've already done. We already understand supply by firms. And we already understand demand by households. What we don't understand, what we haven't studied yet, is supply by households and demand by firms. What we're going to do next is study input markets. And input markets are characterized by supply by households and demand by firms. Once we understand input markets, once we study input markets, we'll be able to understand any supply curve that's a supply curve by households. In other words, th we'll cover this case. And we'll be able to understand any demand curve that's generated by firms. In other words, we can do that case. And therefore, we have all of them. So we won't have to talk about the second and fourth cases. We've already done the first case. Now we're going to do the third case, input markets. and that will implicitly take care of all the other cases. In all of these cases, we have notions of surplus divided between the different agents, whether they are firms and households, households and firms, firms and firms, or households and households. There's a general way of keeping things straight. In all these situations, there's going to be a supply curve and a demand curve. And just for simplicity, let me assume that this is the price line. So it'd be a competitive price line. It's going to be an area social surplus here and uh, a different area social surplus up here. In all these cases, the bottom area social surplus, this one, goes this is social surplus to the supplier. 
whoever it is anybody in the the first column on the in the typed in the typed uh, table the the supply column that's whoever it is that's the person that gets that part of the social surplus and then the other part is social surplus to the demander so who's ever in the demand column gets that so for example in an input market the social surplus to the supplier this part here in an input market the supplier is households so that would go to households and the upper part, this part, goes to the demander. In an input market, the demander is firms, so that we go to firms. So it's always true that the lower part of the social surplus goes to the supplier, and the upper part goes to the demander.